Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today we're going to be looking at advanced hotkeys and some cool tricks that you might not know. So stick around and let's get going. Alright, so this is not going to be a video where we go through all the keys in the game, because firstly that would take ages, and secondly a lot of the basics you likely already know what to do with. There's plenty of videos and guides out there for that. Instead, to start with, we're going to quickly run through six relatively well-known but very useful if you don't keybinds, and move on to the tastier, trickier stuff in just a moment. So number one, the hotkey to examine items. Rather than right-click examine using the menu, you can just press middle mouse button. Most people know this by now, but it's game-changing if you don't, especially when there's a fresh wipe and all your identified items are deleted and you have to start again. Number two, the X fills and time button. By default, O is just check time, and double press O is check time and exits. So if you rebind check time and exits to O, you don't have to double press it all the time. Number three, bind a button for discard. I resisted on this key for ages, but it's definitely worth it when looting. For example, insurance fraud in your own helmet, so you can just remove it with discard and equip the enemy's helmet with alt. It's nice and efficient. Number four, assigning voice lines. Double press Y by default brings up the voice lines, but you can right click on any of these and assign them to a specific F key for quick use. For example, I've rebound hold fire so I can just use it using the keyboard without having to go into the menu. Number five, grenades. These can be bound to a specific key if they're within your rig or your pockets, and they can be equipped with a hotkey like a regular weapon can. If you use the left mouse button, this throws it as usual, but if you use right click, this does an underarm throw for closer range or more precise shots that don't need as much power behind them, like getting a nade into the next room. And finally, number six, tiny guns can be bound from rigs. For example, the MP5K is only two slots, and it can be added as a hotkey from the rig itself. Inventory wise, it stays in the rig even when it's being used. So with those out of the way, for the first real smart hotkey, we need to take a look at how Tarkov's hotkeys can be set up in the first place. There are four options, press, release, double press, and continuous. This is important because of how the different keys interact with each other and are self-explanatory except for maybe continuous, which just means hold or not toggle. For example, hold down to lean. The next tip demonstrates the point well. This is an efficient healing hotkey setup that I actually learned from some comments on a video a few months ago, but what you can do is set the item slot 5 to the keyboard number 5 on press, but the slot number 4 on release. This looks a bit odd at first, but what this allows you to do is to bind a heavy bleed item to the press part of this key, and a light bleed item to the release. Setting this up in the inventory, once I have a hemostat and an army bandage in my rig, I press and hold 5 on the heavy bleed item, and then move my mouse and let go after selecting the light bleed item on the number 5. Now in raid, if I get a bleed, I can press one button, and it will automatically have the heavy bleed heal first, but also I only have one key for dealing with bleeds in general that I can just press without having to worry about pressing 4, 5 or 6 to decide which bleed to heal. There's a few ways that you can mix this up in terms of your preference, as you could have a heavy bleed item and a car kit or a salewa on the release key, which deals with any bleeds, heavy first, and then heals you if you have no bleeds at all. Alternatively, you could have two keys, one for heavy bleed with a heal, and one with a light bleed and a heal, whatever you prefer. I personally prefer to have all the bleeds on one key, and then heals on another key, but it really is just down to what you want to do. Tactical or fast reload is another good example because it comes with a small flaw. You should move your fast reload to another key away from R. This is because, with both actions on the same button, the game has to wait for a short period to decide whether you want to double press R or single press R input in case you want to press R a second time. With regular reload on R and a fast reload on double R, you get a small input delay that is set by the double click timeout control here in the menu, but the minimum is 0.3 seconds or 300 milliseconds, which is really quite large. You can see that this delay exists by setting it to the max or one second, and then you can easily feel how long the delay becomes, so this is proof that it exists at the lower level too. I hate dropping the mag, so controversially I have removed fast reload completely. I'm sure I'll get some angry comments here, and you can just rebind it to something else, but I found that I never used it, and it wasn't quick enough to bother with the mag dropping situation. Because this was just a gut feeling, I went to do some quick testing on this. Using an MDR with regular mags, I found that the standard reload was 155 frames, or 2.58 seconds, for a full reload with the delay purposefully removed. With the delay, this was 171 frames, or 2.85 seconds, which makes sense because we expect the difference to be 0.3 of a second, which is pretty much what we see within a reasonable margin of error. However, unsurprisingly, the fast reload came to very similar numbers, because we're purposefully double pressing and once we do, the game can stop waiting and do the reload. 
But what was interesting is that I measured both of these to be somewhere between 155 and 160 frames, with 160 associated with the no delay fast reload on an independent key, which is actually slower than the original reload, which is really weird. Given this really strange result that did back up my feeling that the tactical reload just wasn't worth using at the moment, I did one more test, firing at the same time as pressing reload for the non-delayed reload and attempting to fire again as early as possible. This cancels the very last part of the animation and is the limit on how fast the reload can be, which ended up being 152 frames for a regular reload and 141 frames for the tactical reload, which equates to about 150 milliseconds. So the tactical reload is actually very, very slightly faster if you cut off the end of the animation. This is a big-ish difference, but isn't as important as something like ADS time, because you get to choose when to reload, and who reloads first is also determined by other factors too, like mag capacity, the weapon's fire rate, and who started shooting first. Also to note, I actually have some other keys unbound as well. I never use the blind fire features, and I've struggled to fit it onto the keyboard, so finally I just got rid of it. Detach mag for me was Alt R, which was way too close to Alt T for check ammo, and nearly got me killed a few times too, and I never used remove mag either, except by accident, so I got rid of this one as well. On a related note, I've moved T for tactical devices away from R, because again, I kept hitting reload by accident. Some people change grenade to double G also for this reason, but I never have an issue with grenades actually, so I've never seen the need to move it away. Now, when I was going through all of these keys, it raised an important question. Why can't we just put almost everything to press? Although it hardly makes any difference, technically press is slightly more responsive than release, because it happens when you press the button down, rather than when you let go. For the most part, this is fine to do, but I have crouch toggle on control, and if you have a key that doubles up as a modifier key, it's usually better to put this on release. In this example, because control for me combines with loads of other keys in my setup, if you put control on its own on press, then whenever you try to do anything with control plus something, you end up crouching first and then do whatever action afterwards. So in my case, as a modifier key, control is better placed on release, so it doesn't activate when a combination is used instead. The next one that has done the rounds over the years is for aim down sights and hold breath at the same time. I use a toggle ADS, which works by applying ADS on pressing the right mouse button and hold breath on the release of the right mouse button, which means that whenever I ADS, I automatically hold breath as well to steady aim. Importantly, I also have another key bound for hold breath, which lets me turn it off again if I'm just surveying an area or sniping, but given I'd rather hold breath first, this is a nice setup to use when you're engaging other people or you're surprised. The final one I want to talk about is a bit weird, and I tried it out for a bit, but I think it's worth checking out despite not switching to it myself, and that is rebinding left and right lean to the opposite sides on Q and E. The rationale for this is that when you're leaning left, you want to be able to move left to peek out, but using Q and A at the same time on the keyboard is quite tricky. Using the alternate key setup, you end up using Q for lean right and D for strafe like you normally would, so you can press Q and then D to go right hand side, and then you press E and go A to go left hand side, which supposedly frees up some of your fingers. This will definitely take some getting used to because your muscle memory is likely all out of sync, but the reason that I didn't end up switching this is that I end up using both strafes whilst peeking, so it didn't really help me. And also, I don't feel too bad about using the key underneath with the pad of my finger whilst holding down the lean button, so I ended up reverting back to the standard control set. But it's one to think about, and maybe it would work for you. If you learned something or enjoyed today's video and want to support the channel, please, as always, consider sending a like and a comment, as it helps with visibility for those who haven't found me yet on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter and Twitch to check out when I'm live, which is currently two times a week, once on Friday at 9pm UK time for the real-time recording of the Scav Talk podcast, which you can check out the link to in the description below, and a regular Tarkov stream on Saturday at 2pm UK time in the afternoon. And with all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.